Um, most likely the magistrates would have disposed of the body. It's not like people carry IDs on them in this day and age. Yeah. So it's going to be almost impossible to identify. No, I meant like the other guy. I got stuff. The ex oh, oh, oh. No. I was just curious. You, no, you haven't heard anything about him yet. He lived, apparently. Saw him jump up and run away. Yeah. Oh! <laughs> he got a new dagger. I got stabbed with this dagger. It says salmon. Yeah. It's got an address on it. Well, good. No, no, no. Where, <laughs> where did he get that to? Oh, that's salmon. It's good. No, no, no. It, says, <laughs> it was just some. Some, some crazy man like threw that Alright, cool. And you have to understand there's no, absolutely no police procedure for investigations yeah. in this day and age. Um, investigations no are rare. There's definitely no fingerprinting. Mm -hmm. People all look pretty much the same unless you were wearing, unless people knew you who saw you do that. And there was 2,000 people in that freaking place. Mm -hmm. And it was packed. So, most likely you guys don't have to worry about that. Um, you can ask around for rumors and there's more likely you'll hear rumors in the next few days. But it's, it's too soon after the event. Gotcha. Uh, what do you guys want to do? I guess we're done. It's like 2 in the afternoon. Well, well, well the place started at 2, so it's probably around 3 or so. You guys have the rest of the day. If you want to do anything, you can wait till tomorrow to go see Dr. D. You can uh, go there today. Uh, you could, um, what else you might be able to do? You found a lot of stuff. Um, well, we told Skarin we were going to do it tomorrow. Yeah, you can wait and do it tomorrow. You can, uh, <laughs> we don't even know where you'd be, because we don't know where Lucy's place is at all. Well, not still there. Yeah, you know where Stern lives. You probably don't know where Lucy is. You know where all of them live, just in case. Okay, so do you want to not do anything else the rest of the night? You could. Considering the play was cut short, maybe we should go today. It's up to you. Today's still the eighth. And the 12th is the next date that you guys have that something is apparently going to happen. Does I'm anybody worried. remember what's... Oh, I know it's Skirm was. Yeah, you all know where Skirm yeah. yeah. You could get Skirm. You don't think he'll be with Lucy for the rest of the day, do you? Uh, from so the sound of things, I would doubt it. <laughs> Ouch. <laughs> you guys know Skirm is single right now. Well, you do remember he dated Lucy. It was about six months ago. Things ended, that's all you know. Or however much Skern wanted to tell them. Did you get drunk? Go to your friend's Oh, she died! are always talking about it. Okay. They know. So, <laughs> it was an amicable break. It was an amicable, amicable end to the courtship. Of course. But nothing point. was ever said bad about Lucy. No, no. We mind. could perhaps go to Lucy's house and let her know that Skern did stab an innocent man. <laughs> oh! <laughs> You guys ruined my chances. I'm coming <laughs> to kill. Hmm. <laughs> Didn't you want to buy a sword? Hmm. We talked about it. I, I want one. I need one now. I should get a sword. Now. <laughs> you could. Yeah. It's possible for you guys to get guns too if you want. I don't know how to use them. I think I'll just get this sword. I feel like it's at 15%. Let's me, so low. let me go get a sword and I'll meet you all at Scan's place. Sound good? Right. Sounds okay. like a plan. Yeah, you can go buy a sword. Like a rapier or a nice nice blade to defend yourself. Like, I want a pretty rapier. It's got to be gold. <laughs> <laughs> Something you say in like. Something you see in a play. A rapier. Do you? Okay. Yeah. One d six plus one plus your damage. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Katie's got the numbers for you, Kyle. If you want to write down rapier, bottom of your shoulder. Here. Uh oh. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. Oh. 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 O
They're so good. Um, hey Andy, for hilarity's sake, can I get rid of my axe and put it all into kick? No. Forget how to use the axe. Kind of. Dang. Well, when you he just goes to a dojo for a little while. Well, no, I mean, because I haven't even used the life. axe ever. Yeah. Someone forgot how to use axe and learned kick. <laughs> <laughs> so use it next time. Oh my god. It does do slightly more damage. Just to be clear, in case we forget, yes. it, I'm taking my blunderbuss with me when we travel. Okay, yeah, you're starting to carry it with you because. I went back and got it. There's witches or some bullshit. Should I? Or some bullshit. Well, consider my. And I can't have two at once, can I? Yeah. Well, it might cut. You can't fire them at the same time, but you can go boom, drop the first one, boom, drop the second one, draw your dagger, or turn your wheel lock around and start beating. <laughs> beating the people away. Should, should I give my rapier skill fencing, or should I give it stage combat? Um, fencing is what you would use. Uh, here we go. If you have stage combat, um, you can, I think we already figured this, one third of that value those fencing fist and grab. So if you put up your stage combat, then your fencing will be one third of that. Right? Is that what the numbers look like? Mm-hmm. No, because I put points into fencing and stage combat. Okay. So then stage combat's for like just making it look good. Fencing's what you can use to I'm gonna kill you. So should I take a third of stage combat and add it to my fencing? No. Oh, I, think you got Jesus. That. I think you got that as you don't like your face for your fencing, because you had some some oh. training. Kyle using the meta gaming that I'm trying to do. <laughs> I tried, James. No, you just tried it. I tried. Don't burn, damn you. All right, so 75, 79. You're arming yourself up with a raid here. You're getting another wheel lock because that's a lot. It's a lot of trouble. It costs a lot of money. Get your license and blah blah blah. blah. But or you can just talk to somebody like in the criminal and get it. I know a guy. <laughs> His name is Selwyn. His name is Selwyn. He's a locksmith. <laughs> He's a locksmith. <laughs> oh, shit. Really tiny ones? They're so cute, too. Ow. You okay? Yeah, I burned myself on a kernel of corn. Alright, so. You guys buy these things. What else do you want to do? Anything? Uh. Right. Yeah, I'm just waiting for them. Mm, I, I still knock. think we're going tomorrow. Just for one. Wow. Um, so knock and you knock on your, on your door. Oh, she was there before we got there. Not yeah, you talked to the Shakespeare and then you box stuff. Yeah, you guys are welcome to. Come in, please. Oh, yeah. There's a little apartment above the printer shop. So I gotta, like, trudge downstairs. Come mm. in, please. And there's, like, steps up to, like, yeah. a little, oh. to the door. Are you gonna be okay? <laughs> Yeah, there's stairs. You help me I'll just wait here in the bar. No, well, I just fought it. It's on some stairs. I'll be fine. Alright, so they not so bad. welcome them in, face them some tea, whatever. Mm-hmm. Tea is very popular right now. Oh, yeah. Are you ready to go? Because I do believe we're going to go find off the beach today. Can I be in my jammies? No. no. <laughs> <laughs> your little nightcap. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. probably sleep in your clothes. Um, do you have any cookies? Yeah. Yeah, I can go today. Um, just let me check on the shop real quick. Aren't, aren't yeah. they worried that you haven't been working for no, multiple I gave them, days? No, I gave them notice. <laughs> <laughs> I no, called no, it no, in. No, <laughs> I, I, did, I went and talked with him and said I'd need a few days of personal time. I told him, I'm sorry, I can't come to work the next few days, I'm dead. <laughs> <laughs> See you on Monday. I'm getting better. <laughs> Alright. Yeah, you can go talk to Fletcher, he's fine that you do all the remember you're workaholic you do most of the work around there so you yeah. want to day out you off he's like mm-hmm. yeah. remember, uh, family guy? <laughs> use that excuse oh, yeah. the what <laughs> family guy that's where that came from it's like sorry i can't come in today i'm uh dead see you monday <laughs> <laughs> well if there's no objection right. i guess we are ready to go okay so you head to manchester yeah uh, it is a very uncomfortable coach ride, as they always are. Um, Why is this coach so hot? <laughs> Instead of winter, it's freezing cold in the coach. Why is this coach so cold? 
You ask around, um, you find John Dee's home lies in the grounds of Christ Church College, um, where he accepted wardenship in 1595, following his return from Europe in 1589. Uh, oh, following his return from Europe in 1589, he had found his house burgled and much of his precious library ruined. Um, <laughs> we all look at you. No. I dropped my lantern, don't blame me. <laughs> it wasn't you. Um, so uh, when you arrive at his house, it is, um, doors opened by a woman probably in her, probably around 50. Um, you find out that's Jane D, his wife. Um, and she says that uh, Dr. D is busy working on what remains of his library, but I will ask if he will see you. Please come in and wait in the hall. Warm yourself by the fire. And then she she disappears into further into the house. Um, well, it's a very narrow hallway. Are you stealing? No. <laughs> Not three yeah. people staring at you. She returns after several minutes, and she says um, she will show you into the study where Doctor D will see. You. She asked for her name or anything, and she was like, "No, come here all the time." No, no. There's some people that want to see. You. Um, and she's obviously tired of it because of her tone. The study is a small room filled to overflowing with manuscripts. Uh, damaged books, precious manuscripts are scattered across the floor, mathematical and navigational devices, many of which are unrecognizable to you, rest on exposed surfaces throughout the room. Uh, there's several maps of Europe, England, and explore the explored Americas, and the known world hanging on the walls. A large portrait hangs on one wall. A small plaque underneath the picture reads, Olus Wormius the Elder, 1240. How to make one? D, the famed mathematician and occultist, there he is, is uh, seated at a desk in the corner of the room. His gaze fixed on a thick volume in front of him. Uh, it's quarter size, bound heavily and sealed with an ornately wrought brass lock. He deals muttering to himself as he quotes passages in Greek and then a phrase in some strange language. Ia shub nigaroth, ia shub nigaroth, Cthulhu What does it mean? What does it mean? He mutters. His wife coughs slightly. <coughs> uh, D turns to regard you. He is large frame, though not as broad as those of you who have seen portraits remember. He's apparently lost weight, uh, particularly about the face. His cheekbones are more angularly defined than they should be for a man once so portly and tall. His thick head of white hair has receded somewhat, and his flowing white beard is stained and yellow. Uh, he's apparently in his late 70s. Sorry, mid 70s. He's probably, he doesn't look like he's the man he once was. Um, <laughs> <laughs> what? In James' eyes? James. Um, yeah, and you realize this is an important man. He is a very important man in English history and to England. Um, he, um, he coughs heavily. <coughs> he says, sit down, sit down. How could I help you, gentlemen? My wife says you, well, we will say that she asked who you were and you told her that you were from London and you had to see Dr. Gates very important. And so that's what he says back to you. My wife says, you've come all the way from London to see me. What, 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 do you, what, is, what is it you need? Oh, yes, I would imagine that the news has not yet hit Manchester. What happened at the Globe today has it. Not unless a man on a very fast horse came specifically to tell. <laughs> well, <laughs> there, are, like there are four of us, and our horse was not fast. But I do believe the news will be reaching you from us first. Shakespeare's life was in danger at the Globe today. Well, that's a terrible shame. I do not know William Shakespeare. I've never met the man, but I understand his plays are quite good, and I've seen a few, and I've enjoyed them very much myself. They are good. So did you just come to bring me the news that someone tried to murder Shakespeare? In what part. the way he tried to murder Shakespeare? He kind of outstretched his arm, saying he was trying to pluck an apple from a tree, but was kind of aiming it at Shakespeare. The apple being the heart and Shakespeare being the tree. <laughs> he was All mumbling. Right. It seems a dagger would be actually more an easier way to kill a man. But he was doing it from, say, 25 yards? Oh, yards. The story. No, yards in this book. Really? I don't think metrics come to England yet. It certainly hasn't, actually. Oh. Not yet. Not in this week. It takes a while before he gets here. So he had a way of killing a man without anyone knowing. So if witchcraft, we, perhaps? 
sort of If you've come to me asking about such things, I know nothing of that that I'm... I know nothing of it. Well, are you familiar with the Johannes Vanderwick? Cannot no. say as I am. That was the man. <laughs> How about a Joseph... Barker. Barker. Let's remind him of the name. <laughs> Bar Bar yes, Bar 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 yes, now Barker I know. Joseph Barker, such a bright student. Barker came to me, oh, must have been 10 or 12 years ago now. I fool Kelly introduced him to me. I'd been experimenting with crystal gazing, scrying if you like, trying to contact the heavenly, the angelic. And it worked. I unfortunately was no master of this art. Subtleties evaded me, but Kelly was able to deny and set about contacting the divine via crystals we had fashioned. The information was handed down to me in a language I christened Pinocchio. The contacts left me physically and mentally drained. We'd been experimenting with the technique for some months when Kelly introduced me to Barker. Barker was only 18 or 19 years old then, professed a facility with such things, saying he had had contact with beings such as these before. So I set about instructing Barker in the art, and he quickly outstripped us all in his ability, delving deeper and deeper into the arcane in his search for universal truths, studying day and night in the library. Well, not here, but where I, at Mortlake, where I lived. I sat in on one of his contacts once, and I confess it shook me to my the very core. I did not recover for two days. After that, I forbid either Barker or Kelly to have anything more to do with the crystal gazing. What I'd seen at that meeting was too horrible for words. I realized that what we were in contact with was not angelic, but demonic. When I told Barker to desist, he flew into a rage, calling me a coward, an amateur, and a charlatan. He said if I was on the verge of a great discovery, that he would soon be given... He said he was on the... Sorry, I misspoke that. That's not what he said. He said he was on the verge of a great discovery, and that he would soon be given the knowledge of all existence. He told me we would continue... He would continue... Oh, we... I keep saying... I'm was... sorry. He's I'm old. Sorry. No, <laughs> wait, no, wait, no, wait, wait. Think he's included in these senses, he's not. He told me he would continue his contact with these demons with or without my permission, as his genius had surpassed mine months before. But I actually think it had, you know. And that was the last I heard of him, and for I journeyed abroad with poor Kelly, who later left me and met an unfortunate end. <laughs> no, sorry. <laughs> Jesus. He fell from grace, literally. Um Is that a ship? <laughs> I need an idea roll from the... <laughs> no, 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 the king of Bohemia threw him out a window. Oh. Oh. There's a minus What's on it. Idea? Ideas up or right? How ironic. No, um... There's a minus on it, so no. No, okay. Um. Is that your dad's yeah. sarcastic laugh? Yeah. <laughs> Okay, so oh. he laughed at that, and then you asked about if he called if it was a ship, and he said, no, the king of Bohemia threw him out a window. Um, <laughs> I traveled yeah, widely wow. in Europe, and while in Germany, I came across the volume, which confirmed my suspicions about my misnomered Enochian contacts. And he crosses over to the desk, and he picks up that, he closes that big, big book that he was looking at, and um, he shows you, well, no, he doesn't close it. He, he, he moves the pages, he shows you the first page. He kind of gestures for you to come over and look at it. And... Displayed on there in large Greek letters is the word necronomicon. He says, necros, gentlemen, meaning the dead, and nomos meaning the law or customs. In this ancient text, I discovered the nature of the beasts we had inadvertently contacted. I've spent the last ten years of my ebbing existence working at this foul book, and I tell you truly that it is killing me. I despise it, and I am fascinated, enthralled, and lust after its secrets. I warn you now. If you seek Joseph Barker for some matter, tread carefully, for he is now surely one of the most dangerous and foul beasts abroad in this fair land. Do you mean he is no longer human? Anything is possible with the teachings of this book and, and the things that Barker was, was attempting. Everybody can make me an idea, Chad. I'm not doing that. God <laughs> bless us all. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Um, you two made it. Yeah. You three. No, sorry. Everybody except right, right Meanwhile, you didn't make it. Yeah. Okay. Oh, no beer. I'm enthralled by the library. <laughs> Look at the library. Um, you realize that um, D, you think, is very troubled. He comes across as scared of Barker. Um, but he also seems relieved to be able to finally tell somebody about all this. Nice. He's 
what you're getting. We're helping the sand. <laughs> I want to know how much he has left. <laughs> you could be. Uh, oh, he was at night. There you go. So, that, you, guys, you guys get that information. What else do you want to talk to him about or ask him? Right? I wanted to whip this baby on out. Oh, so mom. <laughs> the old man dies. So much for his sanity. Please your eyes on this D. What do you think? Yeah, but he's probably seen way worse than that. Alright. Uh, he seems startled by it, and he looks away quickly. And he goes, hmm. We found it on the assassin. If you could put Go that away, I would appreciate it. Please do not let my wife see it. In all of our collective pockets. We were going to give it to you. What? Just a break. break it is. Here, if I take a piece. You're going to what? I was just joking around. <laughs> what does he say to me? Uh, he asked you not to show it to his wife. He looked away very quickly. He was obviously disturbed by it. So you've seen this show symbol before. I have. And what does it mean? Barker, he called it the yellow sign. I believe. He worked on many, many volumes. The one that was most fascinating to him was a Latin volume. Uh, he struggles back up from his chair and he starts uh, looking through the library. He goes, It's here, I think. He goes, I think it is still here. He digs around for a while and then he finally says, I regret, but I cannot find it. I'm most certain it is here. You're more than welcome to look if you wish. The book is called. Diabolus Britannia Libri Deus Antoninus. And if you find it, you would also be doing a great service, but it's my only true copy of the book extant. I believe Joseph translated it and had it published in English in London. But uh, I fear this version is significant. His version is significantly flawed amidst certain key events. I'd be delighted to recover the original and set matters right. What does it look like? What? No. It's a book. A book. Yes, but. Uh, he just gives you kind of a vague no. leather covered book. Almost all these books are leather bound books that he's got. Yeah. So it's kind of a description of a book. No, no, no you guys can no. just start. Uh, wait, do you have Library? Uh, library use? Of library? No, it just says it's going to take a while to find. Okay. Who wants to roll it? Who wants to roll how long it takes? Sure. Can we roll library use? Roll a d6. No, that won't help in this case. It's oh, going to take a few hours to find. Oh, God, you're rolling for hours. Yeah, roll me D6. Help us, James. Help us. Do it right, James. I wasn't going to snack today. I lied to myself. Five. Five out. Days. Um, while the four of you look, um, D goes back to the Necronomicon and opens it up and pours over it, um, occasionally scribbling on a sheet of papers with a quill, muttering to himself quietly while you guys look. You guys are looking for a book to try to help figure this out. Um, Yes. And that thing that was in Croft's place and Vanderwick's is something that Barker uses. Oh. And saying. I need you to make another idea check. I made it. By how much? By one. By one? Yeah. that Barker had uh, a book published in London okay. and you realize that partly that's why you know the name that why that name Joseph Barker seems so familiar to you every time you heard it was because um, okay. Barker came in and tried to get his book printed and you turned him down because you were too busy and there was more to it than that but you can't yeah. quite remember everything that happened <laughs> off the top of your head okay. um, Barker secretly hates you and has been sabotaging your relationship anyway yeah. So then uh, <laughs> Dee just said he, that uh, Bark was really interested in this one book, and you guys started searching. It took five hours. So it is, um, let's see. Um, it's late. So can I, probably do 10 I share at night that night information then. with them? Like, can I? Or 11 o'clock at night, actually. Because you guys ran around, you finally decided you would go, took an hour to Manchester or more. 
Yeah, it's probably almost midnight. Did we ask him about the date? Uh, like show him the, we show him the diagram with the June 12th date, or January 12th date? Oh yeah. No, no, but you can mention that to to skirt to someone. So did you show him that diagram? I haven't yet. I was off in the loo. No, that's okay. You can interrupt the. Uh, it wouldn't be a loo back then. Well, It'd just be the outhouse. Oh, D. Is this one of those <laughs> crystals you are talking about? <laughs> that is like them. Yes. This this is different. This one is um. It's almost as if they had been had been working on. Trying to to uh, <laughs> trying to refine the crystals that we used in some way. That's very interesting. I saw a perfectly cut. Was it a sphere, basically? No, it's like a gemstone. Just like you know, a diamond, like a generic yeah, looking. Yeah, generic. It's like that. Yeah, just huge. I saw With a weird, weird angles inside. Massive, beautifully cut gem, cut in such a way it was baffling. As to how it was possible. Mm. Yes, that would be Barker's work. The kind of thing that he wanted to do, yeah. After five hours, you find the book. Um, it is in Latin. Where's uh, Dr. Whitewood? A handwritten text. You could use Dr. Whitewood. You can go consult him to translate the book. Can, I mean, can, can D, Dr. D, read it? Or he doesn't have time. He's working on. He's working on the thing right now. But you're willing. He's willing to let you take it. You take it with you if you want. He says yes. That's the book that uh, that Barker he translated that book. Um, and then I believe that it printed in London. And some other things printed there too. Oh, that's why that name sounds familiar. Yes, yes. So Barker came into my shop in London. Um, wanted to print a book. I believe this must have been the one. So you know what he looks like? Uh, yes, you would recognize him here. I, I think I would recognize him, yes. It was, it was very busy that day. He's a good looking man, wears nice clothing, like a courtier. Kind of like that. That's what he looks like. You don't get to see. Yeah, we don't get to see. Not yet. <laughs> yes, yes, he lives in Whitehall. I think. But I will tell you he has pouting lips. I can describe him to him. Oh, he lives in Whitehall, I believe. Uh, and he actually right. gives you a street name that he thinks that Parker lives on. We should go right now to his very door. At midnight. It's in the middle of the night. No, we can't do it. Right? Actually, in the middle of the night, hmm, might be a good time to go break in. You <laughs> said that we should be cautious. How powerful is this man? He. He puts anything that I ever learned or could do to shame. Can he knows how to manipulate. Would he be able to stop a blunderbuss? Or do? <laughs> I would not put it past him. What if he was unaware? Uh, that I, I do not know. It would be no different than what Moore did to him, though. And if Barker what did Moore do to him? Shot him straight in the chest. Did he live? Must have been. Mm. He's still That's doing disturbing. things, so... Oh, wait, the letter, the letter. To Vanderwick from Joseph, where is it? I don't know, where is it? Somebody probably has it. I, I know, some of us have it. Because yeah. exactly. we've been showing it to everybody. Is yeah. that his handwriting? Uh, it looks like it, yes. As far as I can recall. That's the letter that was sent to the Dutchman that tried to take Shakespeare's life to death. Mm. Well, as I said, Joseph is very dangerous. Yes. If, uh, he could be a danger to the entirety of England. Perhaps we should revisit Vanderwick's shop, get this crystal you speak of, and go to Dr. Whitewood and see if he can help us with this text. I'm pretty sure it might look good. Because we could do the shop now while it's Late, and then yes. Yes. In the morning. Of course.